Today, transistors are enabling almost every device we use in everyday life. Computers, washing machines, cars, toys, you name it. Most advanced and smallest transistors are in computer processors. Austro-Hungarian physicist Julius Edgar Lilienfeld proposed the concept of field effect transistors in 1926, but it was not possible to actually construct a working device at that time. First iteration of transistors in silicon manufacturing was called planar. The planar transistors was, was invented by John Herney in 1959 and at this time it was actually possible to make it. But what is transistor? Transistor, is, transistor can be a switch or amplifier. For CPU most interesting is the switch mode. We can control it and designer can create uh, create logic gates from it. From these building blocks, CPUs are born. Transistor is made out of two conductive materials separated by semiconductor. In this state, power cannot flow from source to drain. If we apply some power to our control switch semiconductor, the current is allowed to flow from source to drain. Today, computer processors or CPUs how often we name them, are manufactured by many different companies. Some of them are Global Foundries, TSMC, Samsung and Intel. Some companies like AMD work in fabless model where they only design the chip and manufacturing is done by somebody else like aforementioned TSMC or Samsung and other companies like Intel handle the design and manufacturing of the chips entirely in-house. Lithography is a process of using light to print chip designs on silicon wafers. To print modern processors, we use ultraviolet light because of the wavelength. Currently, most advanced technology is called EUV, which stands for Extreme Ultraviolet Lithography. I can't explain it all in such a short video, but the gist is that we are constantly trying to shrink the transistors and pack more of them on the same silicon wafer area. This is commonly referred as PPAC, Power Performance Area Cost Scaling. But what do nanometer in CPUs actually mean? Processors are made using billions of transistors. Originally, nanometer referred to a size of transistor. Nowadays, transistors can't easily be shrinked physically, but still this number refers to density per size of the die. Each single manufacturer tries to increase the amount of transistors that they can pack on the same area, but in general today this is just a name for a process node of a given manufacturer that makes chips. Obviously the smaller we go, the more the bigger density of transistors can be fit on certain area and this is what we want. Planar transistors for many years was the dominant design of transistor. Up to 22 nanometers, it was the everything we basically did. With the shrinkage of the process, planar transistor had to be replaced with something different because of the issue with the current control. With 22 nanometers swap and swap from ultraviolet lithography to extreme ultraviolet lithography, the design changed from planar to FinFET. FinFET represented a revol revolutionary change to the way how we build transistors. As compared to priorly transistors technologies, the Fin contacted on the free side by the gate provided much better control of the channel formed within the Fin. FinFET is reaching the end of its life and utility as we reach five to three nanometer nodes for Samsung, it is rumored to be actually 5 nanometers when they will switch away from FinFET and for TSMC, it should be around 4 nanometers. FinFET, when with shrinkage, FinFET showed similar issues to uh, planar transistors as we kind of lose control of the channel and this has to be replaced so we can keep shrinking the process. With 22 nanometers swap and swap from ultraviolet lithography to extreme ultraviolet lithography, the design changed from planar to FinFET. 
Now let's talk about the future of the transistors. This technology will move us beyond what currently FinFET technology could and enable even smaller and smaller devices. Gate all around or GAA transistors are a change in transistor structure where the gate contacts the channel from all sides and enables continuous scaling. This strategy is called GAA. Early GAA transistors will have vertically stacked nano sheets that are surrounding the gate material. This should solve the FinFET channel control issues. The best thing about the nano sheets is that they are, can be scaled very rapidly for the performance or power. There is a lot of manufacturing issues to jump through with nano sheets, but for sure, for sure in future they will evolve to nano wires, which should improve the process further on. Intel plans to introduce a vertical stacking technology called ribbon fed. From what we can see, ribbon fed will be very similar to gate all around. And what Intel is telling us that from 2024, they will, they will be able to stack fin fed looking transistors in gate all around structure called by them ribbon fed. While Intel didn't shed a lot of light how it exactly will be made, we all can presume that it's, it is basically Intel's way of explaining how they will do gate all around transistors. VTFET or vertic vertical design of transistors is something entirely new from IBM and Intel partnership. It is supposed to replace in future ribbon fed process. It should improve density or power efficiency of final product. We don't have much information about it yet, but in near months, Intel should shed some more light on it. As we can see, the transistor has made a long journey from planar to gate all around solutions and even vertical solutions. If we go, if I got something wrong or I missed a key information, please let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video and want to see more of them, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time.